Group, and I'm with Aesthetic Advisor, and today we are with Dr. Larry Group, and we're going to give you um, kind of an overview of what's the difference between cleaning, disinfecting, and sterilizing. There's a lot of misinformation out there, so we're going to take some information from the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, um, who are pretty much, I would consider, the experts in this area. Yeah, you know, a lot of questions and misinformation about what do we do about microneeding devices? How do we clean them, disinfect them, sterilize them? A lot of people use those terms interchangeably. Um, and do these devices have the ability to be sterilized, disinfected, cleaned? And what's the risk using them to the patient and ourselves? So uh, real quick, um, we need to talk about the difference between sterilization, cleaning, and disinfection. Real easily, cleaning is removing dirt with soap and water some water, you're just kind of removing the blood and dirt and things that you can actually visibly see. Disinfecting is killing all the bacteria, fungi, and most of the resistant uh, bacteria, but not killing the spores. Bacteria have the ability to protect themselves in a state called a spore state where they're resistant to heat and temperature and all kinds of things uh, that's really difficult to kill. Sterilization, on the other hand, is killing those bacteria and spores and basically killing everything. Okay? So for something to be sterilized or sterile, it can't have any, any chance of bacteria, uh, prions, uh, viruses, spores, things like that. So when we're talking about um, disinfection, sterilization, why can't we sterilize these devices? Well, because they have motors on them and they have plastic pieces in them and the sterilization process would effectively kill the device. Right. So if we put them in a dry a, a, a <clears throat> autoclave, the intense heat would fry the motor and the, and the moisture used and the steam used would, would pretty much destroy it. Uh, why don't we just then soak them in, say, glutaraldehyde for 10 hours? Well, because one, my client is going to be here in the next 20 minutes, um, so I don't have 10 hours to do that. But secondly, that's going to destroy the inside of it also. Right. So we would sterilize these things if we could, right? But basically the design of these are the motors affixed to the, to the pen and there's no way to get that out or change it or, or change the design to get to the point where you can sterilize it um, up until a, a couple different pen designs that you came up with. Um, one of the other things to talk about is do the cartridges, the microneedle cartridges, have the ability to leak fluids into the pen? Right? A lot of controversy with that. If you talk to reps, they'll say, no way, and it doesn't happen. And, and uh, I think what we'll do is we'll show some devices, take them apart and see what's in there. Did something leak or not, right? So we also have to decide what level of cleaning do these things need, right? So the question is, do they come in contact with blood at all? Well, if we're microneedling into the skin and we see that petechia, what is that petechia? It's blood. It's blood. Or how about PRP? We spin someone's blood and microneedle that in. So why is it so important to come when we come in contact with blood for things to be sterile as opposed to just being clean or disinfected? Well, because we could get bacteria in it and also then introduce it back into the client or the next client or the same client. Right, right. We're putting bacteria or viruses or prions or, or yuck into the bloodstream. And once we put something in the bloodstream, it has the capacity to travel, replicate, and cause all kinds of things, right? You know what I think is funny about this is if you um, are not a vegetarian, so you eat meat, um, and at home, and there's all kinds of commercials for, you know, you have steak and the blood from the steak and it gets on the counter, pretty much everybody freaks out about it. Or chicken, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and it has to sterilize it and use bleach and all these kind of things to try to clean it up. But we don't have the same type of freaked outness when it comes to microneedling. Well, what's interesting too is you're just eating those, right? Our, our <laughs> stomach acid takes care of a lot of bacteria. Mm -hmm. But if we were to inject it directly into the, the body, is there any defense mechanism? Not really. We have the white blood cells, but we have no stomach acid or any other line of defense. We're introducing bacteria, fungus, and all kinds of yuck right into the bloodstream. So does that actually happen? That's the question. Well, let's take some of these things apart in a moment. When we're talking about microneedling cartridges, though, isn't the issue whether or not the, the fluid can get through that or not, right? Mm -hmm. If the fluid can't get through the microneedling cartridge, it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what the claim is. You'll have these uh, safety cartridges and things like that. So let's take some devices apart. This is a kind of representative of a wider type device. I won't give you the brand, but most of you probably recognize this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take apart a, a fairly new one or a new one here. 
Um, when you look at this, what does it look like to you? Do you see any? Metal. Okay, so we would kind of expect a new one to have shiny metal in there, right? And nothing, no brown gunk or anything like that. Well, I had a couple devices sent to me uh, to either fix or trade in, or they just didn't want anymore. Um, several of them didn't work anymore. Like I can't, they couldn't get the motor speed to turn, or they couldn't get the depth ring to turn. So I took, the, I'm about to take these apart and kind of give you a sense of what's inside of one of these. Okay. So what does that look like to you? Is that the same as the shiny guy over here? If we were compare and contrast. No, it's yellow. It's brown. There's black stuff. Okay. Let's do another one just because, you know, I made a doctor that one up because I am a doctor, right? <laughs> what does that one look That's like even to you? more disgusting. Okay. Well, how about, let's do this one. Uh, how about that one? Not yeah, quite as not disgusting. Okay. Still stuff on it, but it's not as bad as the one in the middle. So how much, how many bacterium or how many bacteria do you need to get an infection? You have to have a lot, right? Mm -hmm. You have to just a ton of inf to get an infection. Or does one bacterium have the ability to cause an infection? Well, one bacterium can grow. Yeah, it, these things replicate at an incredible rate. So we only need one spore to cause an infection within hours, right? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if, you're, if you have a higher load or more of them, the rate of replication is even higher, right? So does this look like a lot of bacteria or not? It looks like a lot to me. So what is this stuff? Isn't it just lubrication? No, it's blood, it's products, it's... How did it get in there? It leaked through the cartridge. And got right into the pen, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold these up there. All right, well, you can say to yourself, all right, well, maybe it's just the design of this particular cartridge in this particular pen system. But there's another one out there that's better that doesn't leak because it has a super nitro safety cartridge, okay? which has a silicon membrane that nothing leaks through, okay? So here's a brand, I happen to have that device. Here's a brand new one of those. I'll hold it really still. Do you see anything in there if I show that to you? It's brand new, so it looks silver and clean, right? Let's look at another one here that I haven't taken about that's used. Does this look any different between the two of them? Hey, you can even see from the side the one that's used is dark on the inside. Okay, then let's take one apart. So I have, Someone traded one of these in. They couldn't get the dial to work. It was stuck for some reason. They thought maybe the dial had broken. So I want to take this apart. What's the first thing that you see when I take the dial off? You can see the yunk. What is stuff that off. stuff? I mean, is there anything keeping fluid and blood and yuck from getting in here? No, it's gone through, and that's where the um, their nose cone attaches to the bottom of the device underneath that ring. So when you pull that ring off, there's actually a break between them, and that's why it's coming out from the inside. Now, did this gunk get through the cartridge? It got through the cartridge. Not, not on this stuff, right? This didn't even make it through the cartridge. This made it through the outside of the pen, inside of the ring, right? It never even had to go through the cartridge. And yet we have this whole reservoir of crap there and stuff and blood. But what about inside where the cartridge was? Anything inside of there? Yeah. So not only do we have blood and yuck that can get through the outside and get stuck in the ring, but what about, we know that the cartridge must leak because otherwise, how did this stuff get in there? This isn't lubrication. Does anyone lubricate their device? This is all product, blood, and yuck. How do we know this is, is true or not? Maybe I'm just making all this up. Didn't we see an FDA report, what's called a MOD incident report, showing that this particular design of device um, had a doc had used some PRP in blood? Mm -hmm. And basically what had happened is that uh, when he took the, the micro cartridge off and looked at there, he saw a bunch of blood and freaked out. So how do we fix all this? If we can't sterilize it, what's the what's the chances for this passing back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, is that can blood and device, can blood and fluids make it through the needle cartridge, and make it back out onto somebody else? Because a lot of the a lot of the uh, reps will say that's impossible. Well, if is there any one way valve on any of these things when you look at the design of the cartridge? If they just leak, they leak. If they leak one way, and blood can get down into this into this little reservoir down in here. Can that come in contact and then make it way back on its way out? Isn't that piston pumping back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So that fluid's moving back and forth. It's not moving in one direction, is it? Because that would mean that the piston's only going like this, but it has to come back and forth. So that fluid's moving in and out. Isn't that what a pump does? Like if you're in the, in the ocean or something like that, when waves move things, all the stuff moves with the waves. That's the same thing with this, we're creating waves. So all of the bacteria and yuck that's stuck in here can also come in contact with the fluid that's currently in contact with and then get microneedled into the into the face again. Um, you came up with, uh, quickly, you came up with a, a design of the pen that A, the cartridge doesn't leak, has seven different features, but also you can take off the nose cone and 
autoclave sterilize that. That is sort of like the ultimate safety factor, right? If a mm -hmm. fluid doesn't make, if fluid somehow were able to defeat your cartridge, which we've not, you've not been able to show that you can make one leak. We also have this as the fail safe. We take this off, this can be high level disinfected mm -hmm. and this can be sterilized. Mm -hmm. If you had to, if you had, you have twins, right? Yep. They're, and if you had to choose one, one twin's going to get this device and one twin's going to get one of these other devices, which twin do you pick? Well, it's almost like the commercial that you've got a safety feature in a car and not one on the other car, which kid goes in which one. I don't want to use it on either one. Right. So I'll leave you with that. So a lot of, we were showing the yuck and stuff like this. We're showing the fact that this is a, a, a real issue documented by the FDA, right? And CDC. No, the FDA no. had the report from Maud and the CDC talks about these things. And, but yet no one wants to talk about it in this industry. I think that we owe it to our clients and each other in this industry to talk about the safety of these things and what we can do about it.